Many people have taken deep breaths and stepped off into the unknown to follow their dream, looking for their own personal legends. Part of the beauty in following your dream is crossing paths with others who are doing the same thing. No two dreams are the same, yet that inner drive and passion is similar within us all. It drives us, controls us, lifts us up, and at times slams us down. But we each get up again to continue forward. I'm Barbara Perez, and this is my Michael McQuarrie <laughs> session of Individual Journeys, which is a look into other people's dreams to see what makes them pursue their own personal legend. And today I'm talking with Michael McQuarrie. Hello. Who I just absolutely adore. <laughs> well, I'm, likewise, Visa Visa. I'm, I'm a great fan of your artistry and look. That's all real, right? <laughs> uh, yes, it's, it's uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> Brought to you by McDonald's. Well, someone had to do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm right? so glad. I'm loving it, as they say. <laughs> Tell me about Michael McQuarrie. I want the whole world to at least, although I don't think anybody will ever totally understand you, because me you're so included. complex. Right. <laughs> it's like, a, like an onion. you're so complex. But, I mean, just to kind of... Give people um, a peek into your mind and what makes you tick. Well, how lovely for the opportunity, as in anyone or any artist, to hear something that even my meager little contribution to hopefully what makes other people's hearts beat is my whole song. That's my whole purpose on the planet. Um, well, as uh, I think as my mother said, when I was four years old on a rainy beach day somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. I was made in Portland, Oregon. That's another part of the story. But my mother told me that when I was like six or four, I, we were reined in on the beach, so we had to watch this little black and white television, and Dracula was on, starring Bela Lugosi. And my mother said that I was like six, or I mean, I probably jumped from three to four, but I don't remember. It was young. But I was, she said that I got up to the television, she said, and she just Instead of watching the movie, she was watching me watch the movie. And she said that I was just transfixed with watching Bela Lugosi's Dracula. And I just turned to her, she, she said, at, when I was like six, and I just said, Look how he holds his cape. Now, I mean, <laughs> she thought right then and there, now this is something different. Let's get this kid involved with something. Because that's not your typical response to, to uh, Dracula. So she thought that was interesting, and thank God for that. And she w was a great lady and the love of my life. And I was put in an acting school. And um, the story goes in Portland, Oregon, at the Portland Civic Theater, that um, I was put in a simple improv, what they give to standard children. And I think it was cowboys and Indians. And I was like, I just decided to be the villain, right? AKA very Dracula. As the story legend goes in Portland, Oregon, that something happened that day, that the instructors freaked out, and I was instantly cast in, uh, they had a mini masterpiece series, and I was the emperor and Androcles and the lion, and I blasted in these doors as a little 10-year-old, and I said, who is that man? Where is he? Magnificent! <laughs> you, sir, shall be the greatest man in Rome! And henceforth, the world changed. And from then on, um, I did... Um, the Witch of Sleeping Beauty to my mother, rest rest her soul to this very day. Her her um, always was her favorite thing that I did. So, but anyway, I did a lot of characters and things like that, and um, I was. Um, now, all of your characters, you stick to like the old black and white. I love somehow. Yeah, they, they took care of me as a child. So the reason why my my echoing back is really what I do is what I did best was recreating. Lon Chaney, uh, even Marlena Dietrich, Bela Lugosi, uh, Boris Karloff. Uh, I loved how these old movies, how these old movies uh, had a indelible imprint on my psyche. And since my mother and I were all we had, I was an only child, the other story, but I would sequester myself in my little room and I would make it big movie land. I'd put on the 1812 overture and I would reenact these huge epics all alone that no one ever saw, 
But to me, it's what saved me. Now, had you seen them? And so, are we? No, I just the music. I, classical music has always been my blanket or brother and sister. And so, uh, I just classical music took care of me, and I would act, I would reenact stories and not really know. But I was so moved by the music that uh, I would just reenact stories and things. And, and then it, 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 it matured in time into like seeing like Gloria Swanson and, and, uh, all these great movie stars, but um, and I would just uh, did uh, all these recreations of what they did that inspired me. And so then, as time went on, I got older and uh, came to New York, and a and I did all these club scenes. I I was eighteen and I was somewhat attractive, so I don't know what happened. But anyway, I was liked, and so people gave me a chance, but they didn't realize. So these bar shows. Boy Bar in the 80s was like a very focal point. A, a lot of artists trying to stay alive. So you were in the club uh, I was kid? The, I was a club kid. Club yeah, kid. that's oh, where that comes. Yeah. yeah, on Facebook, it's crazy. Find me on Facebook. It's nuts. It's fun. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, uh, I did Ema Sumac, which uh, of all things, which is even was even more bizarro because I heard, it, again, it was music and sounds. And uh, I always felt like I was never smart enough to do the typical real actor thing, and yet I did. But you know, everyone has their stuff, and so see, we're not, you're all, we're all the same. And um, so I just did like all these recreations of m movies and stuff. And anyway, here's the story. I was asked to uh, uh, um, audition for a movie, I forgot what it was, and this producer, after waiting for this huge line outside of this window, a casting agent, I finally got in to see the casting agent, and she listened to me, and she said, read this copy, Mr. McQuarrie, right? I said, yes, hello. And she goes, hello, please read this copy, thank you. And I did, and she asked the other people to leave the room. And I said, uh-oh, what happened? She goes, well, you're not right for this role, but I want to tell you something, Michael. Look out this window, and you see all these hundreds of people auditioning for this one role. You're this one thing for all those hundreds of people. I can see that there's work in you, that you're different. Go with that. Go with that and do your own thing because this is not for you, but you can be a lot for ev everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I never, I'm starting to cry. <laughs> so, cause, and I, I forgot that until now. So you just brought, you, you're great. You kind of, you know, ignite things. And that's my whole purpose on the planet is to ignite others. And so that's part of the story, as well, you said, which is complex. Well, and I think you definitely complex. do. I mean, I was just instantly drawn to you. It's like I'd known you forever and ever. And um, I met you at um, the Complete Performer, yes. Ted Greenberg show. Wonderful show. And great show. Fantastic show. Um, but I just instantly, there's something about you that just, I think, draws a certain kind of person to you. Well, it's passion. It's passion. And I th thank you. Thank you. And visa visa. I mean, you know, um, I, uh, my strength and, and my playing card is uh, passion and my whole that's really what I, what I, I use and that's what I work on and work with. And a lot of the film work, people always say, oh my God, you're so incredible. And it's like, thank you, and I really appreciate it. But what, I, it, what it really is, is I'm just showing the pain to gain. And I don't have any doors or ceilings on that. And I just blow well, it all. Well, speaking of your passion, what made you choose Fu Manchu? I mean, because that's, you've, you've got, it's incredible. I've, well, thank I've you. seen, um, which Fu Manchu was it that I was well, filming? Well, yeah, 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 the secret power, um, I'm sorry, uh, Fu Manchu's well, Weapon of Evil. Weapon of Evil. Yeah. It's a web series on U YouTube. Um, you can see all chapters on YouTube. If you just type in Fu Manchu's Weapon, blap, they all come up. There's nine series. But uh, that's a really interesting question, and now it's, inter it's wonderful to have an opportunity. After, I did a show for many years in the early 80s into 90s called, it was, a, it was a cabaret show. Irv Rabel found me at the Trocadero and basically was my uh, Lana Turner story. He saw me at the Trocadero and Quentin Crisp was there and it changed the world. And he goes, oh, look at your spat. How dramatic, I love it. And <laughs> so, because I always liked the glamour. Irv Rabel took me to 88s and I did Matinee Idol, which was a celebration of, I did everything from Valentino to Betty Boop to Bela Lugosi to the, all the Disney villains to uh, Karloff to Chaney to Chaplin to, and, somehow in 58 minutes <laughs> <laughs> and also it ended with me saying thank you because I thank anyone that gives me a little time with your time to me is is everything mm -hmm. and so then what happened then of course things intervene life and survival and that was that was always difficult for me 
And then my friend John, my friend John, uh, John Johnson, delightful best friend in the world, said, okay, Michael, we're going to go to the museum. We're going to go to the Br Brooklyn Museum of Art. There's a thing that you might like called, you know, villains, tramps, thieves, and, you know, uh, pulp art exhibit, murders, tramps, villains, thieves. Sounds like everybody. Moment ever, of peril. I know, right? like everybody I've ever hung out with in my life. I think I heard something. Collection of bar ah, they're, they're, they're about to come get us. Well, I'm so, del so you, you're a weirdo magnet too? <laughs> yes. Anyway, that's what someone called it. Anyway, so long story short, it, I was so miserable. And after, where do you go from Matinee Idol and Joe's Pub? And everyone's saying you're better than sliced bread. I mean, you know, but then it dies. And then you kind of die. So to answer your question, John said, come with me. Let's go see this thing. You might like it. Okay, fine. Took me forever to get there, right? Because I didn't want to go because I hated everything. And I was so romancing the problems, as they say. Get out of that. Find what makes your heart beat. Better way to do it. Um, and I walked into this installation. Music, music playing, grand music. There was a there was a woman way up on a spiral staircase mannequin with her scarf blowing and this fan blowing on her, and this body at the end of the steps dead with a dagger. And I said, Yes, <laughs> yes. This is where I'll go from my one man show. I'll go do something like this. But what? And John said, Look at this, Michael. And there was these paintings. It was called Moment of Peril. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to get stabbed. It was right at the moment where it's going to happen. So it was like, this is as intense as what I can do. This is like a step notch up from my one-man show. And I was freaking out, loving all these things, these mini stories and these paintings, you know. Is it you're getting what you want? This is all, it's all amazing. <laughs>